Welcome to Wayne's Old Time Radio Page channel. I'm Wayne, your host. These programs are brought to you by support of our listeners. You can give your support at Patreon or PayPal, either one. There's clickable links in the description below. Thanks for your support. Enjoy the shows. If you'd like for me to get you a shout out, there's a link to PayPal in the description below. Leave us a donation. We'll get it up here for you. Just tell us who you want it to. You, a friend, a girlfriend, a wife, spouse, whatever. And we'll get it up here. The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. <laughs> How did you ever get that name? I don't know. There was some argument just before my christening. So they picked Ethelbert right out of a hat, huh? No, my aunt was reading some novels. She found that name in it. <laughs> well, it's a good enough name. Well, they might have given you a more famous name. Uh, did I hear somebody start it? Start what? Uh, start to talk about famous names. Oh. Well, what's your idea of a famous name? Huh, that's easy, Casey. Everyone knows Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey Crime Photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Our adventure for tonight... Fog. Late afternoon, the Blue Note Cafe and Ethelbert, the head bartender, completes preparations for the crowd of cocktail sippers that will soon come drifting in. Walter, bring up some more... Lemons! Yeah! So... Oh, hello, Casey. Hi, Ethelbert. Hi, hi. hi. Just come in off a job? Yeah. yeah. Oh, where's Miss Williams? At the office. She'll be here in a few minutes. Oh, this has been one of those dull, monotonous days. I'm getting pep today. You know, I, I kind of feel that way myself. My sister Edna says I ought to take vitamins. Hello, Ethelbert. Hmm? Oh, hello, Miss Williams. Oh, Casey, wait till you hear what's just happened. I know. Somebody's fed you a vitamin. Huh? <laughs> what are you all pepped up about, Edna? Oh, uh, I just received an anonymous letter. Anonymous letter, huh? Mm-hmm. Who from? Oh. Oh, oh, one of them without any name signed to it. Yes. Who from? He said, what's exciting about that? It contains a tip, a news tip, and it sounds like a big one. Here, take a look. Well, what's it say? Read it to him, Casey, but keep it under your hat, Ethelbert. Well, you know me, Miss Williams. Mm-hmm. It's typewritten on plain stationery. Yeah, well, read it, read it. it says, uh, Dear Miss Williams, an important news story may break at the Pelhaven estate of Willis J. Baldwin tomorrow. As your society editor will know, a ball is to be held there late in the evening at which Mrs. Baldwin will wear her famous diamond necklace. If you want an exclusive front page story, arrive around 6 p.m., and say nothing to the police, the Baldwins, or anybody about this letter. We ain't nobody. Which the writer, who must be anonymous, urges you to destroy. Hmm? Well, isn't that something? That's something, all right, but what? Casey, it's a tip that somebody's going to try to steal those diamonds. That's the way it sounds to me. To show this to City Desk, Annie? Yeah, right after I read it. Burke's assigned us to follow it up. Well, we covered together, huh? Mm-hmm. I've read about Mrs. Baldwin's diamond necklace, Casey. It's said to be worth over a million bucks. Yeah. Casey, who do you suppose sent this letter? Well, how should I know? What I'm wondering about, Annie, is why was it sent to you? This kind of a tip is seldom sent to a gal reporter. Mm-hmm. I never had one just like it before. Uh, we're to be at the Baldwin's 50-room suburban cottage at 6 tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. How are we going to crash into their place at dinner time? Look, I'll tell you what. I'll phone Mrs. Baldwin and give her a yarn of some kind. Oh, you know her? Well, I've taken pictures of her, you know, news pictures. Have you ever met the Baldwins or anybody who's intimate with them, Annie? Oh, I've uh, interviewed the Count de la Fere. Well, who's the Count de la Fere? One of those ornamental slickers with a foreign title. Uh. Who gets around the high cost of living by being a perpetual house guest of the oh-so-rich and idle. 
I think he's staying with the Baldwins now. Yeah, well, Willis J. Baldwin's supposed to be a tough, shrewd guy. He's not the type who puts up with lounge lizards. Well, Count Raymond de la Fere may be Mrs. Baldwin's special friend. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, look, I'll go over to the phone booth and put in a call for Mrs. Baldwin, Annie. See if I can make us a date. Thanks very much, Mrs. Baldwin. Yeah, we'll be there at six. Goodbye. Hi. Did you get her, Casey? Yeah. Everything's all set for six. Oh, swell. What excuse did you give her? Well, I said we wanted to come early so I could take shots of the final preparations for the ball. Uh, incidentally, that letter's right about one important item, Annie. She is going to wear the diamond necklace tomorrow night. You asked Well, her? just offhandedly, I said I'd like to take some special pictures if she wore it, and she said she meant to. If the letter's right about that, it's probably right about everything else. Yeah, we'll see, pal. Annie, I still can't figure out, though, why that letter was sent to you. <laughs> Can't you drive just a little faster, Casey? It's after six and we're late. I can't help it, Annie. I can't help it. I can't see if I, if I try to do any speeding through this fog, we might wind up in a hospital. <sighs> Must be close to the water. Hear that foghorn? Yeah. That's the one on McBurney's Point. Oh. Why didn't we check the weather reports and find out we'd run into a pea soup fog and then we could have started earlier oh, and stop not... stop worrying, Annie. We're at the edge of the Baldwin Estate right now. Oh, that, that high wall That's there? right, yeah. It completely surrounds the place. Some years ago, an attempt was made to kidnap Willis Baldwin, and a couple of guys had taken pot shots at him, so now he goes in for walls and armed guards. Who took shots at him? Oh, some guys he'd busted on the stock market. He plays rough down there, even under the SEC. Hey, Casey, there's an armored car coming out that gate. Yeah, that's right. That must have just delivered the diamonds. Do we go in that gate? Yep. After we stop and give the keeper our names. Uh -huh. Ah, there he is. Uh -huh. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I'm Casey, Morning Express. This is Miss Williams. Here's my press card. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Oh, he obviously is one of the armed guards. Oh, yeah, there's a dozen or more on the place. Not counting Big Tim Blake, Baldwin's personal bodyguard. This doesn't seem to me like a good place to try any robberies. I wish I could see something of the grounds, but the fog's so thick and black. Yeah, a really slick crook may have done something you wish we had done, Annie. Check weather warnings. You mean a, a This cr fog would be a great help in getting away. Oh, yeah. Now, here's the house. Oh, well, it's a regular castle. Yeah. Now, there's another guy. Good evening. Good evening, Miss Williams and Mr. Casey. Yes, sir. I just got word from the gateman. May I take care of your car, yeah, sir? Yeah, thanks. Come on, Annie. Mm -hmm. The butler will announce you. He's coming now. Yeah, I see. Hey, Casey, I know that butler. Yeah? Yeah. I'm sure I do, but I can't remember where I Shh, should... Here he is. You're the people from the Morning Express? Yeah. Follow me, please. His voice is familiar too, Casey, and he gave me a funny look. Did you know? Fleming? Is that Mr. Casey? Yes, Mrs. Baldwin. Well, I'm very glad to see you. It's mighty nice of you to let us barge in on you this early, Mrs. Baldwin. Not at all. Uh, this, of course, is Miss Williams, the reporter you said you'd bring with you? Yes. How do you do, Mrs. Baldwin? Nice to know you, my dear. Come into the library. We have something there that will interest both of you. Close the door, Fleming, and keep out that awful fog. Yes, Mrs. Baldwin. He's a new butler. Not very experienced. I have to remind him of everything. Well, I've seen him somewhere. Uh, what are we to see in your library, Mrs. Baldwin? The necklace you want to photograph. It was brought here from the bank only a few minutes ago. My husband and a guest are standing guard over it. It is altogether magnificent, Mr. Baldwin. Mm, it should be. For what I paid for it, Count. Oh, Helen. Miss Williams, may I present my husband? How do you do, Miss Williams? Mr. Baldwin. And Le Comte de la Fere? I uh, believe this little newspaper lady and I have met before. <laughs> it's nice of you to remember me, Count de la Fere. And uh, this is Mr. Casey. Oh, yeah, Casey. Privileged to know you, Monsieur. Mr. Baldwin, Count. Uh, my wife tells me you want to take some pictures of her necklace, Casey. It's over there on the table. I was just showing it to De La Fere. <laughs> in case you'd like to stick it in your pocket, Big Tim there won't let you. Oh, Willis! Oh, the man knows I'm only kidding, Helen. Sure, Mr. Bowen. How are you, Tim? Hello, Casey. Oh, you two know each other? Oh, yeah. Since long before Tim went into the bodyguard business. Back in the days when I was a cop, boss. Did you give Casey an okay, Tim? He's okay. <laughs> oh, then we let him get real close to the necklace, huh? 
Guess you'll want a good look at it, too, Miss Williams. Uh, women usually do. Oh, it, simply... I, I've never seen anything so gorgeous, Mrs. Baldwin. It is nice, isn't it? Mr. Baldwin tells me, and this necklace is the greatest number of perfectly matched first water diamonds set in any single example of the jeweler's art, Miss Williams. Oh, I... I and it is worth... Oh, the amount is staggering. Any man could live high, wide, and handsome for a lifetime on what this necklace is worth, Delafer. So I imagine. But he'd have to steal it or steal my wife, whom I gave it to, and neither of those things can be done while I'm around. I'm sure it would be quite impossible. Quite impossible. I, uh, uh, well, uh, would you like to take your pictures now, Mr. Casey? Yes, Mrs. Baldwin, thank you. I, I, I'm surprised there aren't detectives from your insurance company here to watch this necklace. They're usually around. These when... diamonds are not insured. What? Not insured? Except for a few days each year, they're kept in the bank vault. And when Mrs. Baldwin wears them, as she will tonight, my own employees, like Tim here, keep them well protected. I never take my eyes off them, boss. Well, I'll shoot a picture of them lying here on the table. Oh, no, go ahead. Where's that dumb new butler, Helen? Fifteen minutes ago, I told him to bring in cocktails. Well, I... I... Oh, well, here he comes now, Willis. Uh, why did you take so long, Fleming? I'm sorry, sir. Some matters came up today. No, I... All right, you're here at last. Bring that liquor wagon over here. There's one picture. Serve the cocktails, Fleming. Yes, Mrs. Baldwin. No, I don't like to drink in half darkness. Why have you got all the shades drawn, Helen? Well, you know I always draw them when there's fog, Willis. It's so dreary to look outside. Oh, then let's have fog. something besides just a few table lamps on in here. Turn on the main lights, Fleming. Yes, Mr. Baldwin. Well, I like to see the people I'm talking to. Uh, what's what's, what's that? that? What have you done to the lights? I told you to turn more on, Fleming, not to switch them all off. I haven't touched the switch, sir. I, I hadn't reached it. Now it's so dark, I can't I'll get some it. lights on in here. Tim. Yeah? I found the switch, Willis. Uh, yeah. Well, now that we can see you... What? Mr. Baldwin! <laughs> The diamonds! They are gone! Uh, Tim! I was standing right here beside him, boss, but I couldn't see him. I know who took him. Miss Williams. Now I know who that butler is, Casey. He's the notorious jewel thief, Chris Masters. You're not going to rap me for this. Oh. Stop that bullet, Tim! Oh, he's jumped through the window. I'll get him. Shoot! <laughs> he's running away, disappearing in the fog. He's out of sight. I can't see him anymore. I'm going after him, boss. I'm coming with you, Tim. That man has the diamonds. Helen, give orders to close the gates and guard the wall. I'll take care of it, Willis. Come with me, Raymond. I'm with you, Mrs. Baldwin. Hmm. Well, everybody's gone and left us, Oh, come on, Casey. Let's get in on the chase. Oh, well, there's no hurry. No hurry? No. A man's out there with a million dollars worth of stolen diamonds, and you the stay... The guy you accused didn't get those diamonds. Well, I tell you, I recognized him as Chris Masters. He switched off those lights Nobody and he switched... switched off any lights. Look at the cord on this table lamp here. Hmm? Oh, it's been cut in two. Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? Now I know why you got that anonymous letter, Annie. What? The fog seems to be lifting a little. Oh, well, let's go outside and join the manhunt. Hmm? Casey, will you tell me what you when mean When we by... get outside, Annie, in the fog. The fog that's lifting. <laughs> You know, you hear a lot about modern industrial design with its twin ideals of beauty and usefulness. But nowhere is this better exemplified than in the creation of a new kind of dinnerware called jadeite. And it's spelled J-A-D-E-I-T-E. -E. Jadeite is really beautiful. It has the color of fine jade and the texture of rare porcelain. But jadeite is also unbelievably strong. It resists chipping and cracking and is so heat-proof you can safely put it in a hot oven. And with all these advantages, jadeite actually costs less than the most ordinary uninspired dinnerware. For instance, a big jadeite platter costs only 25 cents in open stock. And a 35-piece dinner service for six people is priced at less than $5. Ask for jadeite at your favorite chain store, department store, hardware store, or at other stores selling chinaware and glass. A set of jadeite makes an attractive gift. And it's an easy way to replenish your own supply of dinnerware. Jadeite is the newest triumph of anchor hawking. The most famous name in glass. The state covers a lot of territory, Annie. 
think Chris Masters will be fairly hard to find. Casey, I want to know why you think he didn't take those diamonds. Okay, Annie. Well, it's because he had no chance to take them. The person who sent you that anonymous letter saw to that. The person yeah, who that sent... letter bothered me. It just wasn't right. When we got here, I recognized Masters under his butler suit and his dyed hair and phony English accent a few minutes after I saw him. You did? Sure I did. Yes, and I was sure he recognized me and you. He wouldn't take a chance on lifting those diamonds with us in the house, Annie. Hmm. Go on. Someone who was in that library a few minutes ago knew before tonight that Fleming the butler was really Masters the jewel thief. And they figured correctly, I imagine, that he was planning to steal a Baldwin necklace. Well, that someone decided to get it first to let Masters take the blame. But this someone didn't want to be the person who pointed the finger at Masters because that wouldn't look so good. So you were brought out here to make the accusation. Mm -hmm. The article I wrote on Masters after my interview with him several years ago was featured under my byline. That's right. By Ann Williams. And that meant that I'd be sure to recognize Masters. Wait a minute. You said nobody switched off those lights? Yeah, that's right. The fuse was blown. The fuse was blown? Yeah. The cord on that table lamp, Annie, had been cut with a scissors and knife, causing a short circuit. When the lights went out, Masters was the one person in the room who I'm sure wasn't near the cord because he's the one person I was watching. It's that cut lamp cord that makes me certain somebody besides Masters was after the diamonds. Well, if the lights were short-circuited, how could Mrs. Baldwin turn them on? Well, she switched on the main lights, Annie, the wall and the ceiling brackets. They're on a different circuit, apparently. Oh, well, why did Chris Masters do a run-out the moment I told who he was? That seems to prove... Well, it only had... proves that whoever sent you that letter did another smart piece of figuring. Annie, didn't you, uh, didn't you mention in your story on Masters that as a jewel thief he uh, lost his head, kind of, when things got hot and he always did a run-out? Mm-hmm. And if I hadn't accused Masters and he hadn't run, Mr. Baldwin would have called the police and everyone in the room would have been searched. Uh-huh. Now the thief has had a chance to get the diamonds off his person and into some of hiding place somewhere. Well, then the someone who planned all this is either... Count De La Fur, or whatever his name is, Big Tim Blake, or Mr. or Mrs. Baldwin. Well, the Baldwins wouldn't steal their own diamonds, oh, Casey. wait a minute, Annie. People have been known to stage phony thefts of their own property. Well, sure, to collect insurance, but Mr. Baldwin said the necklace wasn't insured. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, what do you think about Count De La Fair? Well, a million bucks worth of sparklers might be very attractive to a guy like him. Baldwin seemed a little jealous of Yeah, him. I caught that. And you know the bodyguard, Tim Blake, sir. Well, I don't know Tim Blake well enough to, to eliminate him as a suspect. He said he'd been a cop. Why did he leave the force? Well, for the good of the service. The commissioner figured Tim was too willing to use a gun. He shot up a couple of guys that maybe shouldn't have been shot up. Mm. Well, there'd be no way of finding out who really got the diamonds if he or she hasn't already hidden them. Oh, he or she hasn't hidden them, Annie. Well... A minute ago, you, you said that... I said the thief has had the chance, but he didn't take it. Well, you see, the person who got those diamonds, Annie, wasn't the person who planned on getting them. Oh, what are you talking about? Annie, when the would-be thief reached for that necklace in the dark, he or she got a great big surprise. It wasn't there. It wasn't there? Hmm. Well, how do you know? Because I'd reached first. You? <laughs> yeah. Meet Raffles Casey, the million-dollar bandit. Well, what, what have you done with the necklace? It's in my pocket. In your pocket? Sure. Yeah. Oh, Casey. And everybody but you and me, including the would-be thief, is sure that it's in Chris Masters' pocket. Oh. Annie, it won't surprise me if the smart would-be thief does something very foolish very soon. Gone, Annie. Mm -hmm. you can see pretty well now. Yeah. Casey, all our suspects seem to be looking for masters individually. During the past 15 minutes, we've seen the Count, Big Tim, and Baldwin, each of them alone. Yeah, we haven't seen Mrs. Baldwin. That means she's alone, too. Mm. Oh, Casey, you're taking an awful chance with those diamonds in your pocket. If they were found on you, no one would believe yeah, they'd that think you think the worst, all right, wouldn't they, huh? Sure. But, Annie, this is the first time I've ever had a million bucks worth of anything in my pocket. That kind of makes me feel. Uh, <clears throat> No, no, no. It's funny. I don't feel any different than when I was honest and... Oh. <laughs> hey, Casey. Gunshot. Yeah, over there. Come on, Annie. Come okay. On. Oh, boss, I think I got him. That's Big Tim's voice. Yeah, I did get him, boss. Come in. There he is, beside those trees right there. Casey. You got Masters, Tim? Yeah, the thief. Oh, it's you, Casey. 
Hey, boss, where's Mr. Bowman? I'm coming, kid. You guys stick to your post. Don't fly over here. Masters is lying behind those evergreens. Now, let's have a look. Hey, you shot Masters, Tim? Yes, Mr. Bowman. I heard a movement amongst those trees, and then I saw a moving figure. It kept on moving after I told it to stop, so I blazed away. Hey, you're shooting. What has happened? Tim here just shot our thief, Count. That butler, Fleming. Did you search this guy before you started shooting, Tim? What chance would I have to search him, Casey? I well, just someone told has him. searched him. Take a look at your ex-butler, Mr. Baldwin. Yeah, I see. His clothes are all torn. Yeah, all his pockets that aren't torn inside out are ripped open. Well, I didn't search him. You didn't shoot him either, Tim. I didn't shoot no. him? No. I can't find any bullet holes in him. I see none. This guy was strangled to death. Who did it? What? Maybe the moving figure you saw was the someone who did it, Tim. You fired at it from a distance and then found this fellow lying here and concluded your bullets had shot him. Yeah, that must have been what happened. Who did kill that man? Count de la Fair, I have a kind of a half idea. You have, Casey? Yes, Mr. Baldwin. I have more than a half idea. I just found something near Master's body that... What'd you find, boy? Let us see. I found something that tells me the strangler was you, Count. Let, let me go. Count de la Fair? You're crazy, Mr. Jesus. Baldwin. Help me, this man, man. Let me go. Oh, right. break it up, Baldwin. You got him down. Now break it up. <laughs> All right. But don't let that fellow get away, Tim. I won't, boss. Here's what I found beside Master's hand, Casey. This black coat button. Then I saw there was a button missing from de la Fair's dinner jacket. Look, this button I found matches the others on his coat. You lie. That button you pulled from my coat now when you take me. A jury won't see it that way when you're tried for master's murder. This man is mad. Take it easy, Count. Take it easy. Why should De La Fair be tried for murder, Mr. Baldwin? Because he killed masters. This dead guy was a fugitive suspected of stealing your wife's necklace. If Tim had shot him as we thought at first, you wouldn't have called Tim a murderer. If I had choked that thief, I would be a fool to deny it, and I'm not a fool. But I was never near the man. You deny it because of the search you made of Master's clothes. You wanted the diamonds he stole. Search me, somebody. I have no diamonds. Uh, you've had time to hide him someplace. Take him to the police tent. Wait a minute. Just uh, a minute you're there. butting into this too I much, I don't Casey. think so, Mr. Baldwin. On the evidence of that button, you're formally accusing Count de la Fair of... of... killing this thief, Chris Masters, in order to hijack the stolen diamonds. Oh, now it's Chris Masters, huh? Huh? When Miss Williams recognized your phony butler tonight, she mentioned his real name only once and very rapidly. You knew who your butler really was before tonight. That's crazy. You can't prove that. Maybe I can. Tim was a good shot. When he fired at the moving figure, he didn't miss completely. He put a hole through your coat sleeve. Uh, hole? Yeah. Look. Uh, here. Right that's here. That's me. Go, Tim. And now, Casey, hold everything, Tim. Take a look at this. Yeah, it looks like a bullet hole. It right. is a bullet hole. This man tried to accuse me of what he himself has done. No, 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 no. You murdered Chris Masters, the hijacked property of your wife's that you'd meant to steal. I'll try to prove that. You just try. Let me go. Okay. Baldwin, you've attempted a theft tonight. You've killed a man. And you've tried to frame the Count. Uh, when a guy like that can't be brought to book in one way, sometimes he can in another. Tim, as an ex-cop, wouldn't you say your boss was guilty... If you found the stolen necklace on him? Yeah. <laughs> it's your duty to see if he has it, Tim. All right, I'll hold him again. I you... haven't those diamonds, you fool. Take the hand off my mouth. Go through his pockets, Tim. He's giving me quite a battle here. He's afraid to have you search him. This will cost me my job, Casey. It's your duty. Okay, I'll do it, but... Casey, the diamond necklace. There you are. You did find it on him, Tim. Oh, Casey. Well, uh, this is a frame-up. A, a frame-up. Tell that to Wait. the cops, Baldwin. You and the Count take care of him, Tim. Come on, Paul. When I'm working for the law again... I will help you take good care of him, Tim, after what he tried to do to me. This is a It's a frame hmm. Well, Annie, let's go along. I'm going to get some pictures now. Casey, you slipped that necklace in his pocket while you were struggling with him. Mm -hmm. Yes, Annie. Just like he pulled a button off of Della Fair's coat. You know, Annie, when you can't trap a crook in any other way, one good frame deserves another. We'll join the crowd at the Blue Note in just a moment. Will you please give me your attention for one minute? I have a message of importance for the millions of people in the United States who are listening to this program. Listen closely, please. You can now buy your favorite brand of beer and ale in the new one-way no-deposit bottle. Now, let me repeat that. You can now buy your favorite brand of beer and ale 
in a new kind of glass bottle that requires no deposit and that never has to be returned to the store. This new bottle is light in weight and very compact. It's easy to carry home and takes up less room in your refrigerator. You pay no deposit on the new Anchor Glass bottle and you do not have to return it. Remember, it's glass. Clean and sanitary glass. For more than a hundred years, Americans have preferred beer and ale in glass bottles. So I suggest that when you buy beer or ale, you demand it in the new Anchor Glass one-way, no-deposit bottles. Product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Well, Baldwin confessed after the cops went to work on him, huh, Casey? Yeah, good thing, too, Ethelbert. Actually, I couldn't have stuck to my frame up in court. Mm -mm. Baldwin needed money to pull himself out of a deep hole he got into in the stock market. That big estate, in fact, everything he had was mortgaged to the rafters. Only his wife's necklace was free and clear. <laughs> he preferred to steal it rather than ask her for it. Yeah, because he was pretty sure she wouldn't have given it to him. Yeah. Why did he try to frame that count, uh, whatever his name is? Well, first to cover himself, of course, and then second, because uh. he thought his wife was in love with a guy. <laughs> Baldwin had a big nerve to be jealous after some of the things he'd been doing. What things? Mm, mostly blondes. Yeah? Blondes. Oh, the cops have been digging into his private life. And found blondes, huh? Wow. Uh, t tell me more. Oh. Well, there was a little chick named Doris. And... Oh, darn, there's the bar phone. I'll be right back. <laughs> Blue Note <laughs> Cafe, <laughs> Ethelbert speaking. Wow. Huh? <laughs> You'll have to speak louder. I can't understand you. Huh? What? Casey. What's his name? Huh? The, um, the fog is entirely gone. Are you in the same room? Uh, when we fog? came in here, I noticed the stars huh? were off. Yeah, I noticed that too, Annie. Please. I can't, I Spring was kind of in the air too. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, it's no. uh, it's a nice night to be it's outside. No, yeah, it is. It's a swell oh. night to be outside. Oh, no. No, I can't well, what are we I doing here? You, hmm. you know, we'd be crazy if we stayed here, Annie. Oh, no. Come on, Annie, let's go. Huh? We're going, Casey. Oh, Mister, you got the wrong number. Uh, tell me about them blonde. Where? Walter, when did Casey and Miss Williams go? Out. Out? Out. Oh, well, of all the... Walter, bring up some more lemons. Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is written by Alonzo Dean Cole. It is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures. All products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Photographer is directed by John Dietz and is based on the fictional character of Flash Gun Casey, created by George Harmon Cox. Original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. The Girl Scouts are celebrating their 36th birthday this week. Your time and interest is the best birthday present they could get. If you can spare just a few hours a week, offer your services by calling your local Girl Scout office. This is Tony Marvin saying goodnight for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada.
This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. These programs are brought to you by support of our listeners. You can give your support at Patreon or PayPal, either one. There's clickable links in the description below. Thanks for your support. Enjoy the shows.